Hey guys, Francis here. In this video, we'll be learning about the experimental design of the fluorescence experiment in CM3292. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to differentiate between the emission spectrum and the excitation spectrum. First of all, let's take a look at the emission spectrum. The instrumental setup of a fluorescent spectroscopy is pretty simple. First, we have our sample in a quad cell. And then on one side, we have the excitation source. The detector is usually placed at the right angle to the incident beam or the excitation source. Okay. This is to prevent the detector from capturing the incident light because what we are interested here is the emission of our sample, of our fluorescent sample. The fluorescent compound that we are interested in this particular experiment is quinine. So when we excite our sample with the excitation source, quinine molecule at the ground state will be promoted to the first excited state. And within this first excited state, we have different vibrational energy levels. Okay. So once the quinine molecule has been excited from the ground state, to the first excited state, you undergo a series of non-radiative vibrational relaxations and drop back down to the lowest vibrational energy level of the first excited state. Then you undergo a radiative relaxation. In this case, this will be the fluorescence. This will be the emission that we will be capturing with our detector. So this is what we call the fluorescence. Okay, and it's called fluorescence, right? It's actually emit in all direction, 360 degree. Okay, and we place our detector at the right angle, or you can place at any other angle as long as it's not directly uh, capturing the incident light. In the first part of this experiment, we are asked to set an arbitrary excitation wavelength in order to measure the emission spectrum of quinine. We can make a more informed choice of this arbitrary excitation wavelength by looking at the UVB's absorption spectrum of quinine. So we can look at the absorption maximum and choose that as an excitation wavelength for these arbitrary values. So let's say we found the wavelength to be at about 350 nanometer. So we can actually use these as our arbitrary excitation wavelength. So we will use this arbitrary wavelength to excite our sample. And the typical emission spectrum of quinine will look something like this. We have the y-axis as the fluorescence intensity. And then on the x-axis, we have the wavelength. This particular wavelength here is not the excitation wavelength. It's the emission wavelength that we measure. So let's say we set it to scan from 300 nanometer to 600 nanometer. So this is, will be the emission wavelength for the quinine sample. So it may look something like this. So for example, let's say we find that this peak is at about 450 nanometer. This will be the emission peak for quinine, okay? which corresponds to this particular energy gap here for the fluorescence emission. Okay. So in summary, the purpose of running an emission spectrum is to find the emission peak for the fluorescence compound that you are interested in by setting an arbitrary excitation wavelength to excite our sample. So in terms of experimental design, when we are measuring the emission spectrum of quinine, we get to set the arbitrary excitation wavelength. So in other words, this is actually fixed. We get to set this. Okay? And then in this case, the emission wavelength is the variable because we scan from 300 nanometer to 600 nanometer. So after figuring out the emission peak of quinine from the emission spectrum, next, we're going to find the excitation wavelength that gives us the highest emission intensity for this particular emission peak here. And this is the purpose of running an excitation spectrum. So in terms of instrumental setup, it will be the same as the emission spectrum because we are using the same fluorescence machine. So we have our sample in a quad cell, and then we have the excitation source. And then we have a detector at the right angle to the excitation source. 
So what's the difference between an emission spectrum and an excitation spectrum? Since the purpose of running an excitation spectrum is to find out the excitation wavelength that gives us the highest emission intensity for the emission peak that we found previously. So that's why we set the detector to only detect the wavelength at the emission peak, which is 450 nanometer. This is the information that we obtain from the emission spectrum. And then for the excitation wavelength, we use a range of excitation wavelength to try to figure out which one will give us the highest emission intensity. So that's why we will set the excitation wavelength from, let me say, 250 nanometer to 600 nanometer. So this will be a range of excitation wavelength that we're going to use. So we use this excitation wavelength to excite our sample. And then you have emission in 360 degree. So it's just like the one that we've seen previously in the emission spectrum. But we set the detectors in a way that they only detect the wavelength at this particular emission peak that we are interested in. Okay, So in terms of the excitation spectrum, it's actually very similar to the emission spectrum. So it's like same same but different because for this particular intensity, the fluorescent intensity that we have for the y-axis, we're actually looking at the fluorescent intensity of this 450 nanometer. Okay, so you can see there's a difference between the emission spectrum and the excitation spectrum. For the emission spectrum, right, this emission intensity corresponds to all these different wavelengths that we are looking at. Okay, so these are the the emission wavelength for this particular wavelength. These are the intensity that correspond to this particular wavelength. However, for the excitation spectrum, this intensity here it's only correspond to the emission peak that we obtain from there. So in this case, it only correspond to the 450 nanometer. Okay. How about the excesses then? So for the excesses of the excitation spectrum, it will be the wavelength, but in this case, it's not the emission wavelength, but it's the wavelength that we use for excitation. So this is one of the key difference between excitation spectrum and emission spectrum. This wavelength here, the y axis here, is the excitation wavelength that we try from 250 to 600 nanometer. Okay, so you may obtain a spectrum like this, give you a two peak, something like this. Okay, so based on this particular excitation spectrum, we can see that this particular wavelength actually gives us the highest emission intensity for the emission peak at 450, right? This will give the highest intensity. So in other words, when we choose the excitation wavelength that we're going to use for subsequent investigation, we're going to choose this excitation wavelength. They give us the highest emission intensity at this particular emission peak we obtain from the emission spectrum. Okay. So in summary, in terms of the experimental parameter, there's a key difference between emission spectrum and the excitation spectrum. In the emission spectrum, the excitation wavelength is fixed. This is one of the arbitrary values that we choose at the beginning of the experiment. And we are trying to find the emission peak by measuring the emission of the sample from 300 to 600 nanometer. But for the case of excitation spectrum, the one that we fix is actually the emission. So we fix the emission at 450 nanometer in this case because this is the emission peak that we obtain from the emission spectrum. And then we scan across from 250 to 600 nanometer trying to find the suitable excitation wavelength that gives us the highest emission intensity for this particular emission peak here. Okay. So hopefully after watching this video, you have a better idea of the key difference between the emission spectrum and the excitation spectrum and have a better appreciation of the experimental design behind this fluorescent experiment. Hope you have enjoyed this video and see you in the lab soon. Bye!